the two men doors on God to every generation which includes us on God. Father God, we just bless you that tonight God to open in our eyes, you will give us insight and give us revelation. You will bring us to our next question to be triumphant in God. We just bless your name that God tonight we should hear you from the door. That should take us into the next place we have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And how many of you are not going to act this all the time? But how many of you are truly excited because you were beginning to learn and understand and know yes. what God is saying? Yes. 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 We are to begin to put a demand on grace. Okay. Okay. Anything that God, through Holy Spirit, is teaching us in a season or giving us a word that he says is for us for now, we are to put the man on it. Yes, Amen. Mm -hmm. The prophet gave the woman a bottle of oil, um, a word to borrow out of you. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. And she put the man on it. She went from house to house, she went to a neighbor's. And she borrowed vessels, amen. <coughs> and she borrowed an out of two because that's what her word was. And so she was able to not just get the vessels filled that she borrowed, but she had enough to even start her own business, amen. 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 The Bible said her oil ran out, not. It did not run out, amen. amen. She was able to not just sustain her and her family through the famine but also able to create um, riches and generational wealth from generation to generation because she put a demand on the grace that was made available to her. Amen. That, that, that silence that makes me believe we didn't get it. Makes me believe we didn't understand how she was able to put a demand on something that was released to her. Because anytime a word is released to you and I, we have a responsibility by the kingdom of God to put a demand on it, to make it manifest in our lives. Amen? Amen. We have to understand that if we don't begin to start placing a demand on the word that's preached and teached to us, we will never ever move in the power of that word that God has given us. We won't see the number, we won't see manifestation. And then we will get mad and thinking that maybe the preacher or the teacher or maybe God himself didn't make for that word for us, for us to have that word. That's not, that's not the case. If God has, has given you a, a word telling you something to do, he now expects you to put a demand on the word that he gave you. And the only thing that's going to cause you and I to put a demand on what God gave us is our faith. Is our faith. The Bible teaches us in the word of the gospel. So I'm not sure if it's Mark or Luke. Might be John or Matthew, however long. That um, the Bible starts off by saying, and the and the power of God or the word of God was present to heal them. And Jesus was teaching in a house. Um, some scholars say the house probably was his house because of what took place. Um, the house was full of many people, but the Bible said that the, the, the word of God, the power of God, was available to heal them. However, that means that he was in the house. Amen? But no one in the house put a demand on the word that was available to heal them. So no one in the house of that current moment got healed. It took an outsider to, to, to be drawn to the power of God, to the word of God from the outside, knowing that the word of God is on the inside of that building. Yeah. And so I got to get myself in there. I know when they got there and they opened the door, there was no more room for them to come in because they did not let that stop them. They went and created a door. Somebody said, create a door. Create a door. My faith will cause me to create a door. My faith will cause me to create a door. Amen? Amen. So they tore the roof off. And I love what they did. They, they, they did not put their friend down in the midst of the, the doubt. 
The Bible says that they, they, they let their friend down at the feet of Jesus, meaning that he, Jesus was in the front. And so there was just enough space between the doubters and Jesus that they were able to find a place of faith to safely lay their friend down so that he could be healed. I don't know who the Lord is talking to or preaching to tonight, but he's saying he has pledged, he has, a, he has a, a, just a small space that's, that's set aside for you and I that we will allow ourselves to get in front of our doubters, put them behind our back where they, they're right where we need to be at, and just find that place at his feet. We will, we will allow the demand of faith to be placed on us and on our life can heal. Amen? Amen. Whatever it is you are more waiting, been waiting on God to do, the believing for God to do in your life, and you've been talking to all the people who've been, who've been doubting. So there's a crowd of people that you've been talking to that, that, that look like they, 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 they want the word of God and they look like they want the same thing you want. But see, they, see I've learned not to, to, not to associate myself with the crowd because the crowd is, is, is there full of doubt. The Bible said the word of God was present and the power of God was present to heal them. But the only person that healed was an outsider. The only person that healed was an outsider. And the issue that, that, that I love that the Lord took, um, that allowed to show us the scripture was that all of these men were in some type of sin. Because when he got healed, Jesus told him, God uh, says, I've been forgiven. That's what he told him. So he's letting me know that, that even my sin can't stop my healing. If I put a demand on my healing, when the word of, of God for healing has been preached to me, and a door has been opened to me by grace, and for, for to be healed, if I put a demand on that, my sin can't even stop it. So that just debunks everything that I was taught and preached to as a little child and a young man growing up. Jesus told the man, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the doubters looked at him and said, who gives this man the power to forgive sin? That's what ignorance will do to you. Ignorance will cause you to be against God. And not even know that you're being against God. The grace of God has been made available to us to receive from God whatever it is God said he has made available for us to receive. Your sin, my sin, cannot, will not stop or prevent God from healing you or delivering you whenever you and I put a demand on the word of God that's been released to me. And I'm going to go as far as this right here. Even the doubt can't even do it. There was, there was, when Jesus came on the mount and he, he wanted his son healed and, and Jesus was stuck on telling the people about how they doubted and carried on and the man said, sir, I don't care about that. Get down here. My son died. My son died. Get down here. I don't want to hear that. Stop Jesus in mid-sentence and, and he came down and healed the man's son. But that was the conversation that was had. Jesus, he said, do you believe that y'all believe or help unbelief? But he let them know, I believe you. And I got unbelief you. I'm wavering here. But I believe you still. But I got, I got doubt here, but I believe you. They let me know my doubt won't even, won't, won't even cause me to, um, to, to not deceive God. Once I learn how to put a demand on the word that's been released to me, somebody said, open door. Open door. There's been an open door to this ministry. There's been an open door to me. So if God, God has opened a door, has opened a door to, me, to me, and I'm walking through it. Grace will open doors. Grace will open doors. Father, I receive my grace for every open door that's meant for me to walk in. Amen? Now, what I want to help you with is why, to get an understanding of why you and I need grace to either acknowledge or see that this is an open door. That, that the a door has been opened. Why do I need help? Grace, grace is there to help me, to assist me. Why do I need help or assistance to walk in an open door? It, it, it would think it would be like almost 
redundant to say, hold oh, on, oh, go to the open door. You should have to make somebody go to the open door, correct? But maybe the issue is we are, we have doors that have been opened to us by God that we don't know they're open doors. Amen. 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 So the Lord says, I, I have given you grace to acknowledge and see and have the ability to walk through an open door. Amen. 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 So I'm going to show you something tonight um, in, in the word that the Lord began to minister to me about, about when he says move forward. Somebody say move forward. Move forward. Say move forward. Move forward. Say move forward. Move forward. Again, I say move forward. Again, I say move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Now. now. The time is now. The time is now. To move forward. Move forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Amen. 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 Let's go to the book of Acts, the 14th chapter. Go to verse 27, then we're going to back up and bring some context to this particular passage of Scripture. That if some of you have an NLT or an NIV or Amplified, yours may not read like mine. I'm not sure I had to check on that. But I want to, when I read this, if yours read any different from what the King James reads, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to ask you to read, okay? Read the Scripture, okay? But I want you to acknowledge what version of, of the um, Bible you're reading, what translation, Okay? Acts 14, verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Okay, Alexa has her hand. Give me the microphone, please. She's, 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 she's um, signifying that her Translation is different than what the King James says in word. Amen? Amen. This is Bible study. Are you ready? Yes. I'm reading the NLT. Upon arriving in Antioch, they called the church together and reported everything God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles too. Now, anybody else? Amplify. You got to talk loud, but you don't have to find it. It says, right in there, they gathered the church together and declared all, all that God had accomplished with them and how he had opened to the Gentiles a door of faith in Jesus as the Messiah through whom we obtain salvation in the kingdom of God. We, to whom we obtain what? Salvation. Where? In the kingdom of God. So we obtain salvation in the kingdom of God, correct? Now, hold your string, your little tassel, or whatever thing you call it, that we can put, hold it there, or your finger there, if you got a piece of paper or something. And I want you guys to turn over now to a scripture that we looked at on um, Sunday, Romans 10 and 9. Amen? Amen. Because the Amplified went into more detail by, by um, stating that we was, was obtained, meaning received, Salvation, how and where in the kingdom of God. Amen? So I want to read something and we're going to turn back because I want to, want to show you something through the scriptures that will give you some insight because I don't want to just begin to just hoop and howl and talk about a, a door of faith that been open. Okay? I want to show you exactly what was open and why a door of faith was, um, was needed to be open and what it looks like when it's open. Okay? You ready? Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the and with the mouth confession is made unto what? How is how how do we do, or derive or, or arrive to salvation? By what we confess, right? So if we we I I, I receive my salvation. By my, by my confession. My confession, my confession releases, releases my, salvation. my salvation. I'm saved, I'm saved because, because of what I believe. Amen? I just want to share with you because in the Amplified it because it don't just say confession because if, if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. And you acknowledge and confess. You got to acknowledge and confess. 
you will have your salvation. And, one, and what I want to point out to you all, I want to show you the difference between being saved and actually what salvation is. Being saved is the first work that we get when you get born again in, 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 in the kingdom of heaven. By just simply receiving um, Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. You, your sins have been forgiven and you will never, ever see hell fire. You're going to heaven. Amen? That's what it means to be saved. Now, the other piece, salvation, that means wholeness. That, it, it, that means, um, well, let me give it to you this I don't, I don't like to sound so deep when I say this because a lot of people will hear me say this particular word, but don't even have an understanding of what it really means and why um, they even look at it as being a, a Hebrew word. It means soteria. Salvation means soteria. In, 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 in um, Hebrew, but that word soteria means many of the things. It means wholeness. It means um, completeness. It means um, it means um, um, help me out. Deliverance, welfare, health, wealth. You see victory. You see it. That's what don't. That's what that word soteria means. It means I'm a champion. I win at life. Wherever I once was struggling at, I'm no longer struggling because now I've reached a place of salvation. Right? I'm no longer just saved, but, but there are some things in my life now that you can, that you can see adequately. You have to guess that. And you can see that this person once was good, but now they're that. Amen? Where they were struggling in their finances, let alone struggling in their finances. Where they are, where they have been uh, on crack cocaine, they've been delivered from crack cocaine, amen? Yeah. Where, they've been, where they have been um, having many, many of the challenges and losing, they may still have challenges, but they're victorious in all of them, amen? Because yeah. the word means also victory, amen? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So, now, go back to um, Acts chapter 14, verse 27. You there? The Bible plainly tells us that and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed or I believe the NLT said they did what? Did you have the NLT? Not the NLT. What did it say? And reported. They reported everything. But the King James verse says they rehearsed it, right? So if I'm rehearsing something, that means I'm doing my, my what? Over and over and over again, right? I'm rehearsing it, correct? I'm practicing it, right? What, what's confession? We've been taught that when we confess the word, we confess it by doing saying what? Over and over again, right? Are you with me? You track it. But I like what the NLT said. They used the word report it. It reported it. And I love watching the news early in the morning because if you would ever pay attention to the news in the morning, they will, re they will repeat the same news yeah. until something breaking and something else breaking happens. Have you paid that attention? Yeah. Yeah. What they do, they put the news on a loop. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And we think we're getting a, a fresh live news, but technically we're getting a loop. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 But it's good, it's a good loop, amen, because they're keeping the people informed about what's, what's going on, amen. And if something else happens in the while they're um, revealing the loop, right, they will report it as breaking news, amen, amen. So the Lord here is telling us that in order for us to walk in salvation, we must, we must create a loop, amen. See, this, no, 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 hear me out. This is where most Christians get, get, get up on God. They get tired of the same old, same old. Nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. No, a lot is happening. Do you, will you be able to keep your loop going and keep people informed about what, what God has been doing in your life? That's why I ask you over and over every time I start um, Bible study on Sunday service, how, how many of you are excited about what God is doing? Most of you build up a fake excitement and be like, ah, but really and truthfully, you don't understand that you're in your loop. I'm in a loop because 
I have to continue to remain excited to keep not just the people informed, but myself informed about how good my God is and has been and is going to be. Amen? Holy yeah. Spirit, you preach it. Yeah. You preach it, Holy Ghost. So they're constantly confessing and reporting what's been going on or what took place because a door of faith was opening to them. Do y'all see that? A door of faith was opened to them. Now, I don't want you to think, and I'm not going to sit here and preach, that a door of faith is a door that when you walk into it, you got all the faith now to just conquer anything. That's not true. That's not true. That is not true. What is true is that the reason why it was called a door of faith has been opened to them it's because this is the door where if you recognize that this is the door that God has opened to you, your faith will work here. Amen. Amen. Let me say this again too. Let me, let me say this again today. Because a lot of you are still trying to figure this out because you're stuck. You don't think that the door that God has opened to you right now is actually the door. So you can't even, you can't even fathom going through this door because you don't think it's God's door. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is when you understand it's God's door, his door of faith, that simply means just is the place that once you and I enter into this door, faith will work for us if we work it. Every single time. And I'm going to prove it to you in the scripture because you and I will not get a con true context of an understanding of this particular text or that scripture, um, Acts um, 14, 27, except we back up and see how they came to this report, how they came to this rehearsal of, 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 of communication, how they came to this loop, amen? amen? Because you don't get a faith report without something happening. Amen. Right? right. Just verse 27 is simply a report about what their faith was able to cause them to accomplish. Amen. Okay? Amen. Okay? Yes. So you ready? Yes. Let's back up. Let's go to 14 and uh, 1. We're going to take our time this tonight, amen? amen. I'm going to kind of bounce through a little bit of 14. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna touch on that. Y'all ready? Right. And it came to pass in I can know that they went both together into the synagogue. Well, let me, let me say this. Let me say this to you before we read. Before we read. I want you to um, write this down and go on and read this. I want you to write down Acts chapter 13, the entire thing. So put, put down, read the entire chapter 13 in the book of Acts. That's what I want you to put down for your notes. Because I'm about to tell you something that takes place and how you can understand when a door of faith has been opened to you. In Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that the disciples or the apostles are praying and fasting. They're together in, in their prayer meetings. And the Holy Ghost says, not, not Peter, not Philip or any of, any of the other apostles, the Bible plainly says, and the Holy Ghost says, separate ye me Paul and Barnabas for the work unto which I have called them. Okay? And, and, and any time you or I say that God has called us, we should understand that if God has called me to it, that is the place where my faith is most going to be more champion in my life. If God called me to be a, 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 a pastor, guess what? My faith, if I use it, would cause me to be victorious as a pastor. Amen. If God called me to be an evangelist, if I use my faith, that means that, that God has opened a door for me to walk in the office of evangelism. Amen. If I believe that in my heart, now what I do is report put myself in a loop of confessing that word, and I will see victorious, uh, I will see salvation of evangelism in my life. Amen? Amen? Amen. If I, but I gotta believe that. Amen. No one can't believe it for me. Right. 
I have to believe it because I'm the one saying God called me to the office or to the area of evangelism. Amen? Amen. So that I have a work to do. I have to, re I have to rehearse to myself and to the people of God what the Lord has told me that I am or what I'm to do. Are you tracking with me today? You sure? Yes. So, let's read on. We're going to come back to chapter 14, verse 1. You ready? Yes. And it came to pass, the I can, I can, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the um, the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil and effective against the brethren. Long time therefore abode, they speaking, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by the hand. Why is grace showing up here now? Because opposition is there. Look at what happened here. They went on a sign by God to do what God called them to do. The Bible plainly tells us that they had success, right? But then people who have been, who are God's chosen people, the Jews, start to feel some kind of way because these brothers are getting all their attention. So they begin to spread evil report into the minds of the people that's being affected by what the, the, these ministers are preaching, right? And so God says, okay, let me help my brothers here, my, my sons here, by providing them with grace, giving them power to be effective even in the face of adversity. Amen. You see it? Amen. Point number one. One way I know a door of faith will be open to me, opposition immediately shows up. And, and if opposition shows up and I choose to use my faith, grace will always follow. Grace will always flow. Meaning the ability of God upon and in my life that will cause me to be victorious once I activate and put a demand on the grace that been provided by using my faith to press forward. Amen? Amen. Say opposition. Opposition. Backbiting. Backbiting. Lying. Lying. Uh, discard. Discard. Among the brethren. Among the brethren. Cannot. Cannot. Will not. Will not. Stop me. Stop me. Hinder me. Hinder me. Defeat me. When I, when I choose to understand, to understand and, know and know that the Lord, that the Lord has opened this door of faith, door of faith to, me. to me. I have the right, have the right to, be here, to be here to do, to do what God has called me to do. I activate, I activate my, faith my faith and utilize, and utilize the, grace the grace that's been made available, made available for, me for me to champion, to champion right here. Right here. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Amen. You can talk all you want to talk. Amen. You can back by all you want to back by. You can saw this what you want to this car. I'm not going nowhere. Because I understand that I didn't, I didn't come here and open this door. God opened this door of faith for me. So that gives me all the right to be here if I choose to believe. Amen. I wish I had a church that understands this word tonight. Amen. My God, my God. which gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. See, that's what God's been doing with us with, with the back to school drives and with the um, with the Thanksgiving um, drive that we do and, and the conferences we, we do. See, see, you can tell that we that, that God was working so mightily with the things we're doing and then we got on the attack. That's not time to quit. And, 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 don't, and don't schedule them, that's the time to believe God for grace to push forward even further. Yeah. Just because Pharaoh is coming behind me, don't mean God didn't relieve, didn't, didn't relieve me from falling to Pharaoh's hands. That's right. That's right. you got to understand that when a door has been opened to you, just because Pharaoh is coming, don't mean the door has been shut. Right. That don't mean stop turning around. Right. That means push forward. Just because Pharaoh's coming and the Red Sea now is in front of me and it looks like I have nowhere else to go, that does not mean I'm, that, that, that I miss God. That simply means I may have to stand still and see his salvation. We still have a church. Holy Spirit, you teach teaching tonight. You're teaching Holy Ghost. Verse 4. But the multitude of the, of the city was divided 
and part hell with the Jews and part with the apostles. See, that, 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 that's one thing you got to begin to understand and see. Driven us, I'm, 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 I'm prophesying in part, but yet at the same time, I'm bringing forth an uh, understanding of clarity of what took place. But, but before I, 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 I tell you what took place, the Lord is saying, this is not bringing you down memory lane to, to show you what we missed that. This is him bringing clarity to show you that because we did not shut the doors, because we did not turn 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 off the lights and, 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 and go into mourning, but we kept moving forward and doing what we know God had, had given us the ability and authority to do in the open door that he opened in this region in Camden. He said, because you chose to continue to walk in faith, I have tripled, I have quadrupled the grace on this ministry to conquer and to go forward because I, even though they, 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 they think that because they were able to divide the people by making me go away from this place, he said, I'm going to bring them back these drones. Yes, amen. I'm bringing them back these drones, he said. He said, I'm bringing them back these drones. I'm bringing them back these drones, he said. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. Verse 5, when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and debris, cities of like Keona, and unto the region that lies round about. And they and there they preached the gospel. And, and they and there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had favor to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, In the speech of Lachiana, the God are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Ju Ju Jupiter and Paul Versius, because he was the chief speaker. Let me bring something down to you guys, what the Holy Spirit told me so this prophetic. If you, if you understand this text, anytime there's been great opposition, coming against your ministry. God that, that, will, that will bring it to a point where it's crippled and can't move forward. Where it's lame. God says if you would shout with a loud voice repeatedly what his word says to you about who you are. Although you may be lame in your feet. Although you may have been crippled. I release a word to you tonight. Get up. Because the power of the Lord Jesus Christ has given you the authority to arise and walk on driven, go and conquer, go and leap, go, go, go and go and run, go, 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 go and, and leap over hills and valleys, go and climb mountains, go, go and speak to mountains and command them to get out of your way. Go and move forward in the grace of God and provided for you. But the Lord said the days are over if you will believe. The days are past if you believe. Only if you will believe and open up your mouth and speak to the dry place and to the place of the valley where, where the enemy has, has gotten to your mind and into your heart and caused you to shut your mouth or have caused you to say and fight against principalities that I have not even put against you. I'm telling you now, begin to look at yourself and speak to yourself and tell yourself to walk again. Tell yourself to dance again. Tell yourself to leap again. Tell yourself to get up and move forward because the grace of God is with us, giving us the ability to move forward, giving us the grace to, to conquer, giving us the grace to be victorious, move in faith, and walk in your open door. The reason why I know that a door of faith has been opened to us because of the opposition that we've been facing since the door has been opened. Ever since we decided to, to walk in the door that God had opened to us, opposition met us. 
the Bible says a door of faith was open to them. Let me show you what faith is. Y'all turn to Hebrews 11 and 1. Say it when you get there. Amen. Now faith is the substance of faith what? Oh, oh. The evidence of faith what? Not seen. Say it again to me. Now faith is the substance of faith oh, oh. The evidence of faith is not seen. Now, does it not say by it? What's next? Two. But for by it, the elders obtain the people's report. They obtain they, they obtain their loot. Oh my God. It's time to go home. It's time to go home. They're paying their loot. They're paying their loot. Yeah. Paying their loot. Yeah. I remember when the pastor, when a, when a pastor had a good one, was teaching me how to play on the keyboard. And we had made a little, uh, he showed me, he said, son, I want you to try to make a song that quick. And so he said, um, play this right here. And I played, I played a part. Boom, 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 boom. And while I was doing it, he was he was messing with the synthesizer um, recording part of it and put it and, and recorded it and he put it on loop. And all it did, it kept repeating itself. What I had to play kept repeating itself throughout the throughout the door. He said, "We're gonna let that play, and we're gonna come gonna play this part right here." So I played the other part, and he said, "I'm gonna put that to the loop." And and before I know it, we had recorded everything I I done. We laid down a track. But we were looping it. Wow. So we could continue to keep going as we add other, other parts to the song. Right. Wow. And here we are trying to sing a song, but we don't understand that, that God has called us to, to, to rehearse our loop. He said, until you learn how to create a loop, you can't walk in faith correctly. Because sometimes I will have your loop the last two years. I will have your loop the last three years. I will have your loop the last four years. I just need about two people that will understand that maybe it's not that you get a fight, maybe it's just in your loop.
a new word every every you know day. I don't keep that. I'm just kind of cautious of because they didn't teach me like that in school. We don't learn. We don't learn like that. We, we don't. We don't. We humans. We don't learn like that. Not saying we can't, but we don't learn that way. We learn repetitively. Right? So if I keep giving you something new every day, how are you going to remember all that word? Then I'm going to get mad at you because I'm telling you, do not believe in God. Do not be, I'm not even let, I'm, I'm not even allowing you to take the word of God that he gave you last week to, to be rehearsed in your hearing because faith don't come by hearing a word to hear another word. Faith come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Here, I got to hear that word every preacher over and over again until the root of faith takes root on the inside of me yeah. that would call me yeah. to take what I've been hearing to say back to myself yeah. that would call me now and say, you know what? I think I got it now. I think I can now keep saying what I heard God say. And I'm not going to change the tone to give me a new word. So I need about four people to say, I pray now from the religion of always wanting a fresh word when I haven't even learned in the first word that God gave me. That's right. That's right. Holy Ghost, you teach it. Yes. You teach it. I'm not saying nothing wrong with giving a fresh word every day. But what good is a fresh word if you have not yet learned how to call that fresh word to work for you? What good is it? All you're doing is exciting people. Yes, Get them excited and pumped up. But they have not yet learned how to take a word from God and make it become manifest and make flesh. And you ain't going to make word after word after word manifest and become flesh. It ain't going to happen. Amen. Yeah. So they rehearsed it. And I want to show y'all something that I know the Holy Spirit is talking. Why would the Holy Spirit have Paul to do the exact same thing that Peter and John did when they first when we were on their first um, outing by themselves um, in, 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 in ministry? This is Paul and Barnabas' first outing outside of the Jews when he died um, Icon. When, when in Acts chapter three, Peter and John. Goes up to the temple, get caught, they get there. Yeah. And a man laying at his feet. Mm -hmm. He's begging, right? right? And he looks on Peter, hoping he receives it from them. And, and, and what are they preaching? Come on, that's right. And, 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 and the Bible says Peter looked upon him and said, hey, Look on us. Yeah. Said, Lord, have a time. But such as I have, meaning I'm not going to try to give you something I don't have. Oh, God, I'm going to see you. All I have is a rehearsed word in me. Oh, yeah. That's all I have in me is a rehearsed word. A looping word. And that's power in that word because that's what my faith is built on. My faith ain't, I don't see, I, I ain't waiting on another word to come to work to get no faith. I got enough faith in me because of the word I've been rehearsing over and over and over and over again. Amen. He said, get up. And the same thing happened to that man, happened to this man. The Bible says he gave strength in his legs. Yeah. Leaping up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I said, hold on, hold on. How come you let the exact same miracle take place when you sent two other apostles out? It's because you don't need a new word to go do what I told you to do. You don't know. You don't need a new word. See, that's why I was preaching for pay attention to their Bible. What did God come to over and over? We can see it. All through Exodus. All through, but better yet, from, from Genesis 12 all the way to Joshua 5. Go in and possess the land that I swore unto your forefathers. He didn't change the word. Every time they got attacked, he put them back. What he said. It wasn't a new word, it was the same word. So I'm trying to take, and that word went down for 400 something years. Wow. Yeah. He gave Abraham one word. And 
power is not in how I, how we how we so powerful to articulate the word of God. That's what we lose people at. The power is in the word of God is being preached. Not my ability to preach it. It's in the word, it's in the word itself. I can tell you all day long. Go possess it. Go possess it. Go and possess it. Go possess it. God said, go possess it. Pretty soon, you're going to hear your spirit. Go possess it. I'm going to go get this thing. I'm going to go get this thing. And then you're going to tell I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go. And before we look around, you're going to go possess what the Lord told you to go get. That's right. That's right. I'm not trying to change nothing that nobody's doing. I'm simply trying to bring the body of Christ into realignment with the Father. Amen. That's all I'm trying to do. There will be a season where he will have us to eat fresh word, fresh revelation, everything. Every, he will. He will have us that. But what good is it to be trying to do that when you have not even had the ability to learn the word that he's already given you? Mm. What good is it? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus, help us, Holy Ghost. Ooh, God. Mm. The Bible says, man had never walked before. He was crippled from his mother's womb. That speaks a lot of our need. That lets me know that if God has opened a door for me, it does not matter if I've never done it before. Mm, right. it has, me never doing it before has no bearing on if, if I can do it or not. Mm. The reason why I can do it is because God said, get up, let's go. Yeah. That's why I can do it. What I've done up to this point, whether it to see, Sarah had never had given birth before. Yeah. That's why they said he had to believe even against the dead is a Sarah fool. Abraham had to believe and Sarah had to believe that what God said he was going to do, he was going to do it. Not only did they have to believe in their mind, but they had to look at their situation. Then look at themselves and say, I know I look dead. I'm shriveled. I know I, 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 I know I, I shake when I walk. But God said, well, this shit coming out of me. Can you have, can you find within yourself to believe God to the point? That even despite of what you look like, even despite of how long it's been since God told you that word. See, see, this is why we are not to let go of our faith. You better understand how, how you get faith in the first place. How do you get faith? Faith in my how? Hearing. And what? Hearing so if I keep running and I put this word down that God told me, and I'm not rehearsing it in my hearing. I'm not eating on it. I'm not letting it, I'm not preaching it back to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm not making sure it's, it's performing me every single day. No, I'm always just going at a new word, new word, new word, new word, new word, new word. I never get anything from God. Yeah, you are, amen. You are. I'm simply trying to help some folk tonight. Amen. Sometimes what you need to do is just slow down for a moment and say, Holy Ghost. Help me do a feast on what you've already got set for me that I'm going to go look at. Because mm -hmm. if I tell you simply the same word for the next four years, guess what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. But guess what? Let's look at some more. I want to point something out for you guys that I want you to understand. Paul wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. And what we do, we look at all these different people he wrote to. 
Because every book that he, where we see is actually a letter that he wrote to people. I promise you. I promise you. Many different things Paul discussed, but Paul had one message. Paul had one message. I promise you he did. His one message was, we are saved by grace, grace. through faith. Grace. I promise you it was. We read it. You see. And through, and through that resounding message, he, 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 he enlightened us on a lot of different other things. But his main topic was the grace of God. And I'm going to show you, what, uh, I want to show you something in the Word that I talked before I close, where your power is at, and, 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 and you overlook it. And it's simple. And when you see this, you will quit trying to do what other people are doing. You will simply do what your gospel has allowed you to do. And I'm happy with that. I want to show you something in the Word. We should be Acts chapter 14. We're going to help you tonight, amen? Amen. Holy Spirit, where is it at? Let's see here. I'm going to tell it to you because I don't have much time. And then I'm going to find the scripture, but I'm going to tell it to you. I'm going to tell it to you, and we're going to find the scripture. Because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't write it down, Holy Spirit. Wants me to share this. All right. Paul don't come under attack by some men. They come under attack. They, they go to um, not Patmos, but Patmos. P A T P A T P A O S. Patmos. It's it's almost sounded like Patmos, but the out of John, um, the Apostle John was on. John was on the or he even put relations on the island of Patmos, but they find themselves in Patmos. And the crazy thing about this, the Apostle John is accompanying them. And when they get there, this um, sorcerer yeah. meets them. And he, 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 he tries to come against them. And another man wants to learn from them, but then another sorcerer rises up and tries to come against them as well. And so if you read down in the text, Paul was being attacked by spiritual wickedness. They're actually being attacked, attacked by actual, um, what, I, what the Holy Spirit showed me as being um, 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 earth, earthly principalities. Because these men were over that region, right. in the natural. Right. And so Paul then puts on them what was placed on him when he tried to come against the gospel and frustrate the gospel. Paul called for that they would be blinded and then a man would have to leave them for a few days. Yeah. And that would happen to Paul. And see, Paul understood that, look, hold on now, the very thing that happened to me when I was, when, when, when I was called, I can operate in that same authority. Because Paul understood that if Jesus would go to the lips of blinding him to bring him to the truth, he now has the power and the ability to, 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 to return the favor. Amen? Amen? So what I'm simply saying, I'm not telling you to go around and blind nobody. I'm just simply telling you that there, here comes a place of mystery in the gospel that, let me, let me share this with you. If your struggle has always been money, when you finally get blessed, you now have the ability, because you've been torn in that area, to come and operate in releasing the, 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 the blessing of finances on anyone you come in contact with that has the faith to receive that particular ministry or blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And hopefully um, um, the Lord's going to allow me to go through this tonight and, and, and find my reason. I believe it's in Acts 14. And, um, and share this with you. And if I don't get to do it tonight, I will um, find the scripture and get um, um, proper capacity to to. Um, put it on Facebook so you guys can see the actual text that I'm talking about. Because I'm not making up it up. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you what that is in there. And, and, and you'll be able to read it for yourself and see exactly what the Holy Spirit is sharing with you. Because we're out of time and, 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 and I don't want to go over out of time. Amen. Um, so um, I thank you all for allowing the Holy Spirit to, to minister to you tonight and, that, and for you to be open and be able to receive what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Amen. I believe that 2023 is our year. Yes, ma'am. It's in uh, Acts 13. 
Acts 13, so if you're young, know, when you would have went home and read Acts 13, you would have saw it, amen? Because that was part of the Thank you, thank you, Elder Angela. Thank you for sharing that with you. It's the Acts 13. Um, um, what the Holy Spirit have you sharing with you? When you go home and you read it, you will see how Paul was able to do that based off because that would happen to him. Amen? So um, hopefully um, soon, the Lord will allow me to do some more in-depth teaching on that to show the body of Christ what gifts we are overlooking and what we what power we possess in the body of Christ. And then because um, a lot of people don't understand the Bible in totality. They they, 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 they want to preach that everything is supposed to be done, all goody goody two shoe stuff, but but um, God allows the prophet to call a sheep out the woods. So you can't you can't just preach one side of the Bible. I'm not telling nobody to call no sheep out of the woods, but I'm telling you, quit trying to teach one side of the Bible. And teach the whole Bible, the whole book. Teach the whole book. Because what it's doing, okay, when we try to shun something, because we say, well, that's evil, was it? The prophet did. Was it really evil? So we see something we don't understand, we immediately call it evil. But was it evil? We got the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament putting blinders on people that's coming against the gospel. So is that evil? I really believe we don't understand how to truly engage in warfare as Christians in, in, in the earth. Whenever people have been assigned by the enemy, whether they're Christian or not, because you see here that Jews who were in the meeting were coming against the body of Christ in a move that God was doing. God allowed Paul to send forth the same blindness or put on him on them. And as an apostle tonight, I stand boldly tonight and declare that every any and every person calling to say what gonna say that's been constantly putting their mouth on this ministry yeah. to try to harm it. I release the blindness to you yeah. now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will go blind and you will, your eyes will be shut for a season. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's my godly right to do so. Amen. Because I understand it. Just because you who don't understand it, that's all you go talk to the Holy Spirit about it. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Father, we thank you tonight. Because this is a season and time that we're going to move in a high revelation and a high understanding. Because the king of heaven over this time since John the has suffered violence. But we, God, we take it back for him. We are the Bible of you. And we praise your name for giving us an understanding. Because Jesus said to his disciples that you don't even have an understanding of what this here means. But God, we thank you for giving us an understanding of what that scripture means. And we stand in union with you tonight, Holy Spirit, that we will conquer and we will win because we are victorious in you. And we will stay in the loop until you tell us to create something different. We thank you tonight for the grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. amen.